Welcome, listeners, to Crossing Borders, a podcast that is not about immigration. I'm your host, Sid, also known as Squidney, and this is my co-host, Josh, also known as Mythic. Grab your passports and join us for episode number five, where we will be talking about AI. And this is a special episode, too, so uh, get ready for that. Yeah. Very special. But first, let's catch up on each other's week. Mm-hmm, so, mm-hmm. Josh, anything interesting happened to you, or do you have a story to share, I should say? Well, well, well. Remember the cockroach story yeah. way back then? Um, oh, no. Here's the <laughs> sequel. So, the other day, the uh, my, my, my area was announced like, hey, we're going to have another pesticide uh, stuff happening. So, I was like, sure. oh that's not good that's not good at all (laughs) um and we asked the reason why it was we're Mm -hmm. doing it again right because apparently there's more mosquitoes and uh a couple of people that live in my area were already uh infected with the 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 disease so yeah i okay fine sure um i guess round two of a cockroach whack-a-mole and a super (laughs) horror game and yeah they did the thing and i was outside my house at the time because you know I'm not going to be stuck in the bathroom again at the yeah. not not Never a second again. time nah not doing that again <laughs> so I'm out of my house and I come back um and well the, a lot, lot less cockroaches because we I dealt with the first uh-huh. wave of the army the first time around and uh there, it's still a lot mind you there's like still at least 15 in each oh. bathroom and then outside there was like around 20 that you know i can just stomp with my with my yeah, shoe because that will work which is disgusting still <laughs> yeah and then i i went in my house um you know cleaned up the uh the cockroaches yeah. cockroach carcasses um and it was still smelly smell of the dead bodies obviously and i thought okay we're good we're clear time to take a nap and i took a a, a quick nap i woke up went out of my room and i was like oh no there's a cockroach that so we have a quite a in, in my house at least we have a, uh-huh. sort of a high ceiling and even though it's like only one yeah. floor right so the cockroach was uh hanging on the wall on the near near re- quite near to the roof so it was quite high and unreachable even though you're like holding Uh-oh. a swatter or something so i was like how am I supposed to? I mean, like, when it was in the bathroom, I mean, the bathroom walls ain't yeah. too high, so I can, you know, accurately throw um, a slipper and accurately hit the yeah. cockroach to kill it. This is not the case this time. It's it's up there, and I, I can't reach it. I have to climb up with a, with a ladder, and, you know, that's that's dangerous already. Uh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so I climbed on the ladder, grabbed my sword. I was like, okay, okay. All it takes is one hit. And I s- smack, <laughs> yeah. you know, there's a saying here. There's a saying that everybody gangsta until the yeah. cockroach flies, yeah. right? <laughs> and it's, and it flew. It, uh, it spread its wings and it flew. And I was like, Wah! I was like oh no. Uh, I frantically went down the stairs um, and then, you know, the, the, uh, the cockroach flew across the room. Onto the other wall, onto the other <laughs> high wall. So I was like, curse you, <laughs> it's like, hey, cockroach. Hey, hey, get me now, so, peasant. Move the chair. <laughs> I'm above you. Climb up again. Prepare <laughs> to swat it. I was like, okay, um, if I swat it this way, it won't go to the kitchen. It will go to around uh, like sort of a small backyard or more, yeah. more of a side yard. So that, you know, if, if it flies off away, I don't really care. As, as long as it doesn't get uh, more yeah. inside of the house, I guess. So, like, I saw it that way, and it defied physics. I don't know how he, how the cockroach dodged <laughs> my swat, but he flew into the kitchen opposite the way I was. I, I, I don't understand. These, <laughs> this cockroach has like 9,000 IQ like, or something. Oh, you're not going to Flew me, into the kitchen. Fool. I was like, oh, no. I have the high ground. Yeah, I know. And it's like in the kitchen, like, okay, I got to kill this cockroach quick because if it, you know, goes over my food and stuff, that's, yeah, that's nice bad. That's real bad. I have to throw out a lot of stuff. So, yeah, quickly, I managed oh, to kill it. Um, this time, I just took a, a piece mm-hmm. of scrap paper 
I don't use this water anymore. So it was like crawling yeah. on the floor of the kitchen. So I grabbed a uh, like a mm-hmm. piece of old paper and I just smacked it with my hand. Crunch Ooh. it, you know? <laughs> you hear that crackle. I'm like, yes, okay, he's dead. I lift up the paper. He walks again. <laughs> I was like, what? How is this possible? This, this creature is immortal. <laughs> I know, and I keep smacking it again, right? And then every time I lift up, it walks again. I'm like, "How is this possible, <laughs> mate?" Like a pan and just like last time, I, I think it, it was like the third pan. Tries boiling it alive, and it's yeah. Still fine. So and you're like, "What is, what is happening?" <laughs> I know, like, what is, what is this wizard? What is this <laughs> witchery? You know, is he using any spells? Any protection spells? I, the third time I swat it with my hand. Finally, it's dead. Whoa, okay. That's dealt with. Throw it in a bin. And I can finally let out a sigh until I looked up and there's another cockroach <laughs> up at the wall. Like, I have been no! reincarnated. And that's basically my afternoon gone in the well, drain. So, yeah. Uh, I won't continue because it's more or less the same story, same story of uh, yeah. trying to kill that cockroach. Because they just won't die. They just, I just keep hitting them and they won't die. That's what I hear. Oh, it makes me so they got angry. That enchanted armor. <laughs> Anyways. <laughs> yeah. How was your week, man? Uh, so, recently, I purchased a video game I've been, I have had my eyes on for like two years, or maybe not two years, but for a while. Whoa. Uh, okay. This video What's it? game What's it called? is called Rain World. Oh, I'm sorry. Maybe I'm dumb because I, I don't keep up with games a lot. Is it Rim World rain or Rain World? World? Like rain from the sky. Okay, what's it so, about? Essentially, you play as a slug cat and you run around. Uh, and, and, and just go with it. <laughs> He's cute. Uh, and, uh-huh, and you run uh-huh, around okay, this okay. Like, 2D world and you try to survive and get to the end. There's a story but I have no idea what it is. And uh, the cool thing about it, though, is the AI and animations are, like, really cool. So the way they do it is none of the creatures Mm -hmm. are animated like you normally would, like where you get the guy and then you animate the leg movements like if you're making a movie, you know? What they did is they Uh used procedural uh animation which means it calculates what they're probably supposed to look like based on like which an- what angle they're at, where they're looking, where the near near points of land are uh, to try to guess where the feet will be and where the tail will be. Yeah. Oh. So it the, the creatures can like coil around really complicated shapes and look fine because it's all procedural. It's all coded animation. And it makes it look really cool. Okay, uh, okay. The second cool thing. Ooh. Yeah, I, I can imagine. The second cool thing is uh, the AI is is really cool. So all the all the monsters, they're not like traditional like bad guys in mm-hmm. a video game. Like for example, in Mario, you run around the level and all the turtles just walk back and forth, you know. Uh, and then they hit you, you die. Yep, you know? yep, yep. In Rain World, yep, uh, very basic. the the creatures act like actual animals. They like run around. They hunt other creatures. If if you if one if there's a lot of lizards, so if like a lizard's trying to hunt you oh. and trying to eat you, then maybe there's a chance another lizard could show up and fight the first lizard over you as food, and then they'll start fighting and you can escape. What? Yo, that's I know that's it's cool. Advanced. And then there's like these, In- these interesting vultures, interesting. which are like these massive birds that like have some like smoke coming off of them or something, and they like swoop down from the sky and just like pick up oh, oh, okay like, lizards and you or whatever, and it's really cool. Whoa, yeah, that sounds yeah. cool for a two D game. Pretty cool. And then there's the scavengers, which programmed to act like players essentially they're supposed to be the play they're supposed to be your equals 
Okay, okay. In intelligence. So, <laughs> uh. yeah, it's a really cool game. And I'm really looking forward to playing it uh, maybe on my channel a bit. Maybe a live stream. Oh, yeah. Make sure to yeah. check out Squidney's channel. Squidney Games. Link in down below yeah. or on our Make about sure to page. check out Mythic's channel. Squidney Mythic Games Magician on YouTube. On YouTube. That is right. Although he doesn't need as much help as I do. Please subscribe. No, All sure. right. <laughs> you could also subscribe on our yeah. Crossing Borders YouTube channel or hit yeah. follow on Spotify, on Google Podcasts, yeah. wherever you're hearing this. On. Yeah, hear yep, yep, more, yep. more random stories about killing cockroaches and me just having the most random things to talk about while Mythic's always having little Definitely. Mm -hmm. battlegrounds going on in this house. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'm not quite sure what's wrong here, mate, yeah. honestly. <laughs> Anyways, artificial intelligence. Ah, the interesting Beautiful. topic of the year. I love AI, and it is amazing. They are going to eventually surpass humans, and we're all going to for die. Now, but awesome. For now, it's cool. <laughs> for now, we support. Later who on, later. who knows? But today, since today is episode 5, uh, what we're doing is every fifth episode, so like episode 5, episode 10, episode 15, you know, following that pattern, we're going to have a special we're doing a episode. Special. Yeah. And in this special episode... Outside of the topic of yeah. America versus Indonesia. So, yeah, you know, we'll mix things up, up a bit. By uh, changing the topic up and maybe doing a little something other than just talking about a subject, you know? Like, maybe we'll agreed, do like agreed, a spicy agreed. food challenge sometime. We were, hold like on a very minute. spicy, a spicy like, food so spicy challenge. It makes you cry. Are you trying I, to I, kill I, I me? I think hot Cheetos are a little too spicy for me. So, I uh, <laughs> follow uh, if you want to see that. Okay, um, where I okay, this is sort of a sort of an Indonesian thing. Uh, I have to get into this a little, a little quick. I, I need to explain to Squidney here. I can't eat spicy food. Um, we have here an, a, a brand mm -hmm. of instant noodles in Indonesia yeah. called Indomie, and it is one of the most yeah. delicious food in the world. Please, if you have a chance, go buy it. It's okay. so good. <laughs> Any flavor, <laughs> it's so good. Anyways, that that every every type of the flavor has their own um, mm -hmm. chili pack, and the chili pack is rated as you know not too spicy. And basically, if if you can't eat the spicy or the, the chili pack um, in that instant instant noodle pack, that means you are you can't eat spicy food. And I can't <laughs> eat that spicy thing. I mean, I can, but I'll suffer and suffer real bad. So, so neither of us are good ooh, with spice at all. Are you suggesting spicy food challenge? Oh, no, you no, can't no, no. eat spicy really food as well? Spicy food too. Like, when I, <laughs> when I go to like a Mexican restaurant and get like... <laughs> I don't know, some sort of enchilada. Uh, enchiladas are really good, by the way. I love enchiladas. Um, but the sauce, most of the time, if it's like the not spicy sauce, it's just Ooh. barely, it's like, uh -huh. it's, it's teasing the borderline between just enough spice and being a little bit too spicy. So, <laughs> Oh, <laughs> okay. But this is not the topic. Of, yeah. We're going out AI. of this. Uh, or anyway, back uh, to AI. Yes. Squidney suggested yes. a contest. So, okay. will you elaborate? So, listeners, prepare yourselves for the contest of the day. The day. No, the just, century. just the day. Oh, never mind. It's not that grandiose. All right. Okay. Maybe even mm -hmm. the contest of the week. But. Ooh. Oh, the contest of the week. Kind of, Let's go. Kind of scary, actually. Very uh, nice. We are going to use uh, an. It's a free AI called uh, ChatGDP. Is that what it's called? OpenAI. OpenAI. It's called OpenAI. And mm -hmm. we are going to use OpenAI's chatbot to generate stories. And then we're going to have a contest. <gasps> oh, I love stories. The best wins. So the contest, not only the best stories, but the best oh, storyteller. Yeah. Maybe we, ooh, we should have a few few uh, categories we should have like best in actual plot ooh, ooh, true, true, best true. in like uh the setting and best in humor 
Oh, wait, okay. Um, so you're saying best in setting, best in plot, and best in... Humor. What's the comedy. last one? The laughs, the giggles, the chortles, the and humor. the chuckles. Okay. We got them here, folks. I have no idea where that came from, but that was that was pretty smooth. <laughs> <laughs> it's okay. It's all right. It's all okay. right. It's fine. All right. Time to generate story. So, what's the topic here? What's the, uh, so we don't, don't we don't go okay. too uh, abroad. Let's, I'm right? gonna ask the AI generate me some story prompts. Topics. Oh, I need to reload. Or, or prompts, yeah. Or or like yeah. categories, you know. Because okay, this 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 episode is about AI, so we're yes. using AI to do everything. Everything is about AI. <laughs> We can even ask the AI to write the outro oh, or something. That would be, that might awesome, be cool. Actually, we could even. We should have oh, done it for the intro. Have. It's fine. Uh, it's fine. But you know, <laughs> we could have the AI make the thumbnail. Mm. I already <gasps> made a thumbnail, Ooh. but. Ooh. Your thumbnail yeah, looks good, though. To I can be just honest. plug that in as like a reference <laughs> image, and then it could come up with. Yeah, we'll see what. Happens. We'll see what yeah. happens. Okay. Today. A few story ideas. Write a story about a person who discovers they have the ability to time travel, but can only travel to the past. Okay, write a story sure. about a group of friends who decide to start a business together, but things don't go as planned. Three, write a story about a person ah. who's stuck in a repeating day and must find a way to break the cycle. Four, write a story about a young wizard who must face an evil sorceress and her army of dark creatures. And five, write a story about a person who inherits a whole on uh, an old house, but when they move in, they discover that it is haunted by the ghost of the previous owner. Okay. Here, how about this? I'm gonna write my own prompt. You're gonna write your <laughs> own prompt, okay. and and I w we'll just read out whatever comes out. Okay. We'll give each okay. other three, three minutes, minutes to come up with an idea, and we'll come back. Are you ready? Oh. All right, I'm ready. You ready? Well, that was perfect timing. Okay. Would you like to go first? Okay. Uh, I, I'd i say you propose a title, and I'll propose a title for our story uh, that was generated okay. by the AI. And um, we'll, we'll let the viewers or the listeners decide, decide who has the best title. Okay. So, what's your title? My, uh, the title of my story is Josh the Mythic Magician. <laughs> oh, no, no. Okay, my title is. Hmm. Uh. Okay, this is hard. <laughs> you could always ask the AI to come up with a title for it. <laughs> uh. I, I could, but uh, I kind of want to come up with my own title. Come on, uh, come on, brain work. Think hard. Think hard. I'll title it the key. The key. Ooh, simple mysterious <laughs> very simple okay uh, do you want to go first or should i go i will first? go first yeah so okay <laughs> i'm intrigued my my prompt that i gave it was write me a short story starring a mythical magician named josh set in a high fantasy world with dire stakes and this is what it <gasps> gave me <laughs> okay let's listen everyone okay josh was a legendary magician Known throughout the kingdom for his extraordinary powers and his bravery in the face of danger, he had defeated countless foes and saved countless lives, earning him the respect and admiration of all who knew him. But, despite his many accomplishments, Josh had never faced a challenge like the one that lay before him now. A great evil bum, bum. had risen in the land, threatening to enslave the kingdom and plunge it into darkness. Only Josh had the power to stop it, but the stakes were dire, and the odds seemed impossible. With a heavy heart, Josh set out on his quest, determined to save his people, no matter what the cost. He traveled through the treacherous mountains and dense forests, braving raging storms and facing down fierce beasts. Every step of the journey Ooh. was fraught with a danger. But Josh remained resolute, driven by his sense of duty 
and his love for his kingdom. I accidentally smacked my mic right then. <laughs> <laughs> at last, after many grueling days of travel, Josh arrived at the lair of the evil sorceress. The sight that greeted him was one of unspeakable horrors. Twisted creatures and, <gasps> and dark magic abounded. And the sorceress herself radiated malevolence. But Josh was not deterred. With a fierce cry, he drew his sword and charged at the sorceress, his magic at the ready. The battle that ensued was unlike any other Josh had ever fought. The sorceress was a formidable opponent, wielding dark powers beyond his understanding. But Josh was a warrior of unparalleled skill and determination, and he fought with all his might. The clash of magic and steel echoed through the lair as the two battled to the death. In the end, it was Josh who emerged victorious. His magic had proved stronger than the sorceress's dark powers, and with one final blow, Clearly. he struck her down. The kingdom was saved, and peace was restored to the land. Josh returned home a hero, hailed by all as the greatest magician the world had ever known. You're welcome. <laughs> You're welcome. You're welcome. But he knew that You're as welcome. long as evil lurked in the world, there would always be more battles to fight. And with his magic by his side, Josh was ready to face whatever dangers came his way. Just as he was settling back into life in the kingdom, Josh received a mysterious message from an unknown sender. The message contained only a single line. The darkness is rising. You are needed. Josh knew that this could not be a coincidence. Someone or something was calling out to him, summoning him to a new quest. And though he had no idea what dangers lay ahead, Josh knew that he could not ignore the call. With a heavy heart, he set out once again, determined to face whatever challenges lay ahead. But as he left the safety of his kingdom behind, Josh couldn't help but wonder, was he walking into a trap? Or was this the chance he had been waiting for to truly prove himself as the greatest and most mythical magician of all? I am the greatest, clearly. There's no no debate here. <laughs> There's no need to prove it. <laughs> that was a... Uh... That was quite. That, I didn't expect it to uh, generate a long story from such a short um, prompt. I, yeah. I probably did a prompt too specific. That's why it generated us like a sort of a short story. Yeah, uh, like way shorter than what uh, you got. Mine was but pretty long compared to a lot of the other stuff I've gotten with the uh, AI in the past. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Yep. So about the plot. There was a few plot holes there. I um, well, while I was listening. What? First it was of all, flawless. I think ten out of ten. <laughs> no, 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 no. What? You can't judge your <laughs> own story. No, 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 no. <laughs> um, first of all, as a mythical magician, I wouldn't need to draw out my sword. What do you yeah. mean, draw out your sword? Yeah, there he wasn't draws much out magic going on. That's that's true. <laughs> <laughs> magic at the ready. What magic are we talking? He drew his sword. It's a sword. Also, there was a little bit of magic involved, but he drew his sword nonetheless. <laughs> I know. <laughs> Anyways, mine, my title was the key because I had no other idea what to title it. Um, the prompt was write a story about a person who was stuck in a time loop with his friend. In the huh. time loop, he must stop a terrible accident that kills a lot of people. In the end, Ooh. he finds out that he. That the key to escape the tunnel was killing his friend. Will he do it? Ooh. That's the prompt. It's probably too specific, but That's it's okay. That's a really good prompt, though. <laughs> like, that could make a really interesting, like, movie. Yep. Uh, I just put, like, put in key points of, like, the story and mm -hmm. see what it generates. And here's what came out. Okay. John and his friend Rachel has always been close ever since they were kids. They had grown up together, and they had always been there for each other through thick and thin. One day, John and Rachel found themselves in a strange place, a place where time seemed to stand still. They were stuck in a time loop, reliving the same day over and over and over again. Oh. At first, John and Rachel were just confused and disoriented, but as the days went by, 
they realized that they were there for a reason. They were there to stop a terrible accident that will kill a lot of people. Every day, John and Rachel tried to figure out how to prevent the accident. But no matter what they did, it always seemed to happen. They were starting to lose hope. But then John had an idea. He remembered something his friend had told him. Something about the key to escaping the time loop. Mm-hmm. He thought about it for a long time, trying to understand what it meant. Finally, he realized what he had to do. The key to escaping the time loop was to kill his friend Rachel. It was the only way to break the cycle and save all those people from the terrible accident. Oh no! John was torn. He couldn't bring himself to kill his best friend, but he also couldn't bear the thought of all those people dying. He, he didn't know what to do. In the end, he had to make the decision. He knew he had to do whatever it took to stop the accident and save all those lives. He, he couldn't live with himself if he didn't try. So he took a deep breath and raised his hand. He closed his eyes and swung his arm, hoping with all his might that he was doing the right thing. When he opened his eyes, he saw that Rachel was gone. No one witnessed what John did, but the time loop was broken and the accident had been prevented. John was relieved and grateful, but he also knew that he would never forget the sacrifice his friend had made. He vowed to always remember Rachel and the love and loyalty they had shared. The end. That was actually really good. I know. <laughs> I was like, whoa. It came up with this? What? I was invested. Insane. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So, setting a humor. Uh, there was no humor there. Yeah, bo- both um, of ours were like plot? zero out of ten humor. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I was like, oh. Uh, maybe I should put like a with a funny tone in it or something. How about okay? How about instead of humor, we can change it to presentation, since neither of us had any humor. Presentation. Uh, <laughs> Your presentation was good, to be honest. Yeah, I tried. Clearly. Yeah. Well, obviously, yeah. So, what did you think of the story of the key? The key. Well, I must say, probably not the best title. <laughs> Uh, the title, once you hear the story, the title makes sense. But before hearing the story, I gotta admit, I did not know what the story was about. It didn't quite capture my intrigue, so to speak. However, yeah. I, I should have generated, I should have asked the AI to generate me a title, but it's okay. However, it was a very compelling plot. Very good. Uh, there might have been a few plot holes, like, if it was a time loop, mm-hmm. then if he killed Rachel and it yeah. didn't work, then wouldn't the time just loop back and she would be brought back to life? Or are they the only two unaffected? Mm-hmm. They're the only two unaffected, I think, in this story. That's something you must consider. Also, while you were reading it, I was like, this is literally mm-hmm. the trolley car um, issue. It's like, oh, do you redirect it to <laughs> yes. hit the one person or kill the five people, you know? That, you know, that was the idea when I put it, I put the prompt in. <laughs> that was the idea. Uh, to put a trolley, the trolley problem, but into a time loop story. That, that was, I, I'm, I'm really proud and also really, um, also sort of like shocked that you caught on that there was the, tr- the trolley problem. Yeah. Interesting. Yeah. But, very smart. Let's say okay. Presentation. It was a good six out of ten. You showed um, zeal and energy. It wasn't like the best story I've ever heard, you. like told wise. You know. Uh, yeah, well, well clearly. You know. <laughs> um, but yeah, you did very good as a narrator. Um, let's see. The plot, thank you, thank you. Uh, I would have to give like a 9 out of 10. That was a really good plot. Thank you, thank you. Oh, man. I, I worked hard on it, clearly. For being like three paragraphs long, the the emotional mm-hmm. like connection to the characters was just really good for like three paragraphs long. Of Yeah, like, I know, right? That's insane. Like, I just felt like, <laughs> oh, no. John, you had to kill Rachel. <laughs> 
painful, painful. <laughs> when when I heard your story, I was like, okay, the the plots, the plots are, are like, yeah, the plots quite. I don't know what's the difference between setting and plot. I'm, I'm maybe I'm dumb here, but okay. So the plot is, is difference? the events and progression of the story, while the setting is the world and characters which it takes place in and with. Uh okay okay. In terms of um setting, it's mm, okay I guess. I, I'll, yeah. I'll give it a six. Okay. The plot's pretty good. Um, you know, setting up as this uh sort of op- opposite to the mythical magician, the the evil sorceress. Yeah. I'll I'll give it a seven. All right. And your presentation was also great. I'll I'll also give it um an equal seven. All right. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, so for you, plot yep. is nine. Presentation six uh, and setting. Uh, time loops are pretty cool, uh, but other than that, there wasn't much of a setting. Uh, yeah, so I'll give it. I can probably. Yep, I'll give it a six as well. Oh, that's very generous. You should have given it a four, but that's very yeah. generous. Thank you. So, anyways, shall we get to the next story? All right. This time, another three minutes, which you know, for you listeners, will be. Yeah, we'll we'll uh, cut it out. No, so. no time at all. However, this time we'll have a little <laughs> twist on the story generation. Ooh, okay, okay. This time, you have to add in the phrase to your prompt as if it was written by an elementary schooler. <laughs> I'm sorry. Wait, as wait, as if it was written by an elementary schooler. Yeah. Or a child, or like a young kid, okay. or something, some equivalent, you know. Okay. Well, let's, let's see what comes out. Talk to you in three minutes. And this time... Okay, I think I should, I should go first yeah, this I was, time. Yeah, right? I was just about to say that. I'm like, this time you should go first. Well, uh, that, that's what I'm go- about to say. Okay, what's, you your, what's your title? Great minds, think, great minds think alike. Okay, my title. Leo the Lion and Ben the Bear, A Tale of Boasting and Greed. <laughs> Oh, uh, that sounds like a kid's book. It sounds book. like a fable, you know. Mine didn't end up sounding <laughs> yeah. like a kid's book at all. Uh, it misinterpreted what well, I meant, but we'll <laughs> we'll get to that. <laughs> okay, uh, shall I start my story? Yes, then? proceed, great storyteller. Okay, uh, I'll, I'll say the prompt later at the end so it all doesn't right. spoil the story. Here we go. There was once a lion named Leo who was the most boastful animal in the whole jungle. Oh, no. He would strut around and brag about how strong and fast he was and how he was the king of the jungle. One day, Leo met a bear named Ben, who was the greediest animal in the whole jungle. All Ben cared about was eating as much food as he could and he would do whatever it took to get his paws on it. Leo and Ben didn't like each other very much at first, but they soon realized that, hey, they had something in common. They both liked to boast and brag about themselves. So they became friends and spent all their time together, competing to see who could boast the loudest (laughs) and the longest. Uh. But their boasting and bragging started to get on nerves of the other animals in the jungle. They were tired of hearing Leo and Ben go on and on about themselves, and they decided to teach them a lesson. So one day, they set a trap for Leo and Ben. (laughs) They told them that that, that there was... There was a giant pile of delicious food hidden in the jungle, and that the one who found it first would be crowned the ultimate bragger. Leo and Ben were so excited that they didn't even think to be suspicious. They raced off into the jungle, determined to be the first to find the food. But when they got there, they, they found that the only thing waiting for them was a big, empty pit. They had fallen for the trick, and now they were stuck at the bottom with no way out. At first, Leo and Ben were angry and frustrated, but as they sat there, they started to think about all the times they had boasted and bragged. They realized that they had been foolish and that their boasting had only caused problems for everyone else. So they made a promise to each other to change their ways and be more humble in the future. And when the other animals finally came to rescue them, Leo and Ben were grateful and apologetic. From that day on, Leo and Ben were known as the humblest animals in the jungle. Oh. And even though they still like to have a little bit of fun, they made sure to always remember the lesson they had learned. The end. Now, once again, your story that was, was a very pretty good. good story. 
<laughs> okay, here's the prompt I put it. Write a short story as if it was written by a kid about a boastful lion and a greedy bear finally learning their lesson with some humor mixed in. And I saw no humor, but okay. <laughs> uh, that that was right. a good story, though. <laughs> what did you think? Um, I liked it. Uh, that was totally something I could see in like a kid's book. Like, yep, yep, oh, yep. okay, it's just time for bed. Daddy, please read us about the lion and the bear who like to, to brag. And he's like, okay, children, uh, you need to learn that lesson anyways. And then he sits down with them, opens the book, <laughs> and he's like, ah, ah Leo, Leo the, lion the lion and <laughs> Ben the bear. A tale of boasting and greed. Okay, sit down, kids. Tuck, you, tuck yourselves in your bed, and let me read you the story. Yes, indeed. But no, that was... We make a great dad, to be honest. <laughs> Just saying. That was pretty good. Uh, yep, yep, yep. So, what's your title? My title boy? is The Package. That does not ring anything about kids or anything. No, it, to it totally did not understand. <laughs> <laughs> no, there was nothing about... Okay. okay. Let sure. me begin. All right. As Emily sat on the crowded train, staring out of the window as the passing at the pack the at the passing landscape she was startled by a loud thud by her side she turned to see a small crumpled package sitting on the seat next to her as if someone had intentionally left it there at first emily was hesitant to touch the package it was covered in scribbled writing like something a child might have done but her curiosity eventually got the better of her and she carefully opened it up Inside, she found a simple note written in childish handwriting. It read, Please help me, I'm scared. <laughs> Is this a horror story? Is this supposed so. to be a horror story? <laughs> I should not be laughing, but Sorry, I did not expect this at all. <laughs> Emily's heart raced as she read the words. Who could have written this? And more importantly, why had they left it for her to find? As the train rumbled on, Emily's mind was filled with questions. She felt a sudden urge of responsibility to help whoever had left the package, but she had no idea where to start. As she tried to think of a plan, Emily noticed that the other passengers on the train were starting to give her strange looks. She realized that she must have been visibly distressed and quickly gathered her things and left the train at the next stop. Determined to find out the truth, Emily set off on a journey to track down the person who had left the mysterious package. It was a long and difficult road, filled with twists and turns, and more than a few dangerous encounters. Through it all, Emily remained focused on her goal, driven by the fear and desperation she had felt when she first read the notes. In the end, she discovered that the package had been left by a young boy who had been taken from his family and forced to work in a terrible sweatshop. <laughs> this is so dark. <laughs> sorry. Sorry. Yeah. Are, you, are you sure you're trying to write a kid's story? This is... <laughs> <laughs> with Emily's help, the boy was able to escape and reunite with his loved ones. And Emily knew that she had made a real difference in the world. As she returned home, Emily couldn't help but feel a sense of pride and accomplishment. She had faced her fears and done something truly meaningful. And she knew... That she would never forget the journey that had led her there. So what do you think? <laughs> I'm sorry. What were you? Okay, what prop did you put in there? What happened? Okay. I thought I thought a mystery story would be interesting, and looking okay. back, I I realized I could have worded the prompt differently. That would have produced a, a child story. But as it goes right now, it is actually what it should yeah. have been is. Write a story um, written by an elementary schooler that begins with the main character commuting on a train and somebody leaving a mysterious package by her side. Um, but what I wrote and what it generated it off of was <laughs> write a story that begins with the main character commuting on a train and somebody leaves a mysterious package by her side as if it was written by an elementary schooler. And it obviously thought... <laughs> Not what I meant was the package was written by an elementary school. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> That's why I put the as if it was written at the front because I yeah. know the I realized AI probably mistake. won't understand and it. And I was like, uh. <laughs> <laughs> that that story was not fit for kids at all. The, was the one that? time I go like as if it was written by a child, sweet 
story, please. I want something wholesome. It gives me the darkest story we've had today. <laughs> <laughs> I know. Uh, what was that about? Okay. Let me rate your story then. <laughs> Presentation, mediocre. I'd say six. Mediocre. Uh, plot, <laughs> plot, I'd say 11 out of 10. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Did it fit the goal of trying to make it look as a as a kid story? Oh, absolutely not. <laughs> no, I'd say a minus one out of ten. <laughs> oh dear. So what's your rating of my story then? Okay. Your story. Let's see. Okay, presentation. I'd give it a six out of ten again. It was about the same as last time. Uh the story. Mm. Uh the plot. I would say wasn't as good. It's pretty generic, um, story yeah. like kid story wise. Mm-hmm. You know, oh, there's the the, the funny animals. <laughs> they get tricked. Oh, yeah. Well, I wasn't no. expecting to. I wasn't expecting to go against a full blown mystery, <laughs> scary mystery story. Child My kidnapping goodness. and liberation. Yeah. Novel. Uh, dang. But uh, your uh, <laughs> plot, I would give a seven out of ten. But to match Ooh, the prompt, thank you. I would give it a 10 out of 10 sounding like a children's story. That was spot on child Hooray. story. Hooray. Thank you. Very You're generous. Welcome. Very generous. All right. My turn. Okay. We're going to do a last story generation. Uh-huh. And this time, I twist? want us to use a phrase in a prompt okay. written in the style of a pirate. <laughs> okay. I it is. Okay, another three minutes, and we'll meet right back here. And for you guys listening, just just a, a, two seconds probably. They'll get a drink of water as you pause it, and then come back in three minutes, and it'll feel like the same amount of time. But we'll get right back to you. Yeah, definitely. Okay, three and two and a one. Here we go. Let's go. Okay. <laughs> um, I'll, I'll I'll let you take the stage. Good stuff. What was your title? Ooh, oh no, I. Okay, I, I'll come up with one on the spot. It's called oh. Ye Man Who Feared Everything Under Sun. <laughs> okay. <laughs> I'm intrigued. Okay. Let's hop right into the story. <clears throat> Ahoy, mateys. This be the tale of a man who feared everything under the sun, from the tiniest of bugs to the biggest of storms. He was the kind of man who <laughs> jump at his own shadow, ye see. Well, this scurvy coward of a man ended up on me ship one day, much to the dismay of me entire crew. We tried to get rid of him, but poor bloke was just too afraid to set foot on solid land again. <laughs> so we were stuck with him, like a barnacle on the hull of a ship. Now, this might not seem like such a big deal, but ye have to understand, this man was a menace. Every time we hit rough waters, he'd be clinging on to something for dear life. Whimpering like a wee babe. <laughs> and don't even get me started on the times we ran into pirates. <laughs> the man would practically wet his pants at the sight of a Jolly Roger flag. The real kicker was when we ran into a giant octopus. You see, we were sailing You see, we were sailing through these waters, known for their giant octopi. And sure enough, one of them reared its tentacles at us. Now most men would have manned up and fought the beast. But not this one. No, he turned tail and ran, screaming like a banshee. In the end, we had to tie the man to the mast just to keep him from jumping overboard. <laughs> and even then, he was still shaking like a leaf in the wind. It was the most uh, ridiculous thing we'd ever seen aboard our hero vessel. Needless to say, we were glad to be rid of him when we finally made it to port. We sent him on his way with a swift kick to the rear and a hearty laugh. Ha <laughs> ha. I swear, I've never seen a man so terrified of life itself. <laughs> but I suppose that's just the way of the world. Some men are brave, and some men are just plain cowards. <laughs> <laughs> what was that story about? Okay, what huh. prompt did you put in there? My prompt was, could you write a hilarious story that was written by pirates about a man who fears everything? <laughs> <laughs> I love that. It I'll rate really the good. presentation 10 out of 10. Oh, I'll sweet. rate the plot 10 out of 10. <laughs> and the matching with the uh, with the prompt, 10 out of 10. Woo! I love it. Perfect score. It so Let's much. go. <laughs> let's go. Oh, yeah. <laughs> uh, okay. Okay, let's my, see what you my, get. my turn. Yes. What was your Here we title? Go. Um, <laughs> 
Here we go. Mm. The Great Sea Adventure of Isaac and Santa. Santa? <laughs> as in, as in North go. Pole Santa. North Pole Santa. <laughs> yep. Okay. I mean, it was recently Christmas. Might as well. Yeah. All right. Let's jump right into the story. Ahoy, mateys! This be the tale of two unlikely friends, Isaac Newton and Santa Claus, as they set sail on the open seas for an adventure unlike any other. It was a cold and snowy Christmas Eve when Isaac Newton, the famous scientist and mathematician, <laughs> found himself wandering the streets of London, searching for a way to escape the chill. As he walked, he stumbled upon a jolly old man with a bright red coat and a white beard, who introduced himself as none other than the Santa Claus. <laughs> ho, ho, ho! Merry Christmas, Isaac, exclaimed Santa. What brings ye out on a such cold night? Isaac told Santa that his desire to escape the winter weather and see the world and Santa feeling a twinkle of mischief in his eye suggested <laughs> that they set sail on their ship, the North Pole, he says. And so the two set off on an adventure through the open seas, braving rough waves and dodging treacherous pirates. Along the way, they encountered all sort of wonders, from mermaids and sea monsters to hidden treasure and exotic islands. Ooh. As they say... As they sailed on, Isaac and Santa became the best of friends, sharing stories and laughter as they explored the vast ocean. And when they finally returned home, they were grateful for the adventure they had shared and the bond they had formed. So if you ever find yourself feeling cooped up on land, just remember the tale of Isaac Newton and Santa Claus, <laughs> two unlikely friends who braved the open seas and made it back home safe and sound. And always keep an eye out for adventure. You never know when you might find on the open seas. <laughs> Okay, I, I missed <laughs> I missed the part where it was Isaac Newton. <laughs> uh, and also, that was the most random story I've ever heard. <laughs> Isaac Newton and Santa Claus going on a pirate adventure. Like, <laughs> I, I <laughs> that was the point. I was like, okay, last story. Gonna come up with the most random thing ever. So I put in a prompt: write a story written in the style of a pirate about Isaac Newton. Meeting Santa Claus and both of them having an adventure through open seas. Nice, <laughs> nice. And, and that's what it came out of. Oh, no. What's my score here? I can already imagine. Okay. Presentation. Very good. I'll give it a 10 out of 10. Uh, oh, very generous. Mostly because um, you're like, okay, I'll start. <laughs> oh, Ahoy, matey. And I was just like, whoa. I did not expect that. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I just, you know, I was in the moment. <laughs> <laughs> uh, okay, and let's see. Plot. I'd have to give it a solid 7 out of 10. I was so enthralled thank you, thank you. through the whole story. Although the best part was, of course, the interactions between the best of friends, Isaac Newton and Santa Claus. <laughs> As is expected. I know. Absolutely insane. Um, all right, all right. Let's see. Humor. I'd say. Humor, I would give it a good okay. 9 out of 10 for humor. Uh, mostly because it was okay, just okay. so random and out of the blue. <laughs> and all right. it fit with the pirate theme. I would give it a 7 out of 10 for the pirate fittingness. Because it was pretty piratey. It was mostly just talked like a pirate. Mm -hmm. But... Yeah, unfortunately, there was not a lot of um, dialogue. Yeah. <laughs> oh, I also okay wrote a little something extra. Mm -hmm. Oh, okay. So um, I thought it would be funny <laughs> to ask the AI if it would apologize for the story about Emily because it didn't realize it was supposed to be a children's book. <laughs> 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 and this is what I got. Okay. I'm sorry if my previous story about Emily was not what you were expecting. It seems that I misunderstood your request and wrote a story that was not intended for a children's audience. Please accept my apologies for any confusion or offense my story may have caused. I will be more careful in the future to make sure I fully understand a request before proceeding. I hope you can forgive my mistake. To which I responded, I we forgive stand. you. Oh. And then it responded, thank you for understanding. I'm glad that I can still be of help to you despite my mistake. Uh. <laughs> well done. 
Okay, I, I, okay, I don't want to kind of end that there, though. I, I, I still kind of want to do one more story. Um, but this time, I'm going to do half a prompt, and you'll do half a prompt, and then we'll combine the prompt and see what comes out of that. How about that? Ooh, that's a good idea. So we have the same prompt, essentially. You, technically the same prompt, uh, but for, so you can, for example, I, I have some prompts, and you have some prompts, and we'll mix those together, but we can put them in any order we want and so you'll generate one story and i'll generate one story and we'll see what comes out of that all right okay in three two one send okay <laughs> here we go okay we go. my prompt was all the weapons in combat is made of or based on fish my prompt <laughs> A story about a boy named Sydney who was stuck on a train heading from Texas. No. And we'll see what comes out of Not the Texas. combination of this. Okay. <laughs> this will All be right. interesting. I'll give you two minutes to arrange the words and uh, same for me. And we'll be right back. Nice. Did you get, did you get a story? This is so good. <laughs> <laughs> I'm ready if you're ready. My, I don't think mine. I don't think the AI understood what I asked, but well, it's a story, I guess. Mine is so good. <laughs> oh no! I, uh, okay, I'll go first then, because I yeah. think um, I think mine is a, a a worse one. Okay, what's your title? Okay, here's here's the the fish wielding hero of the Texas train robbery. <laughs> okay, sure. <laughs> Here we go. Sydney was just an ordinary boy, except for one thing. He had the unique ability to wield weapons and combat techniques made entirely out of fish. <laughs> That's right. It was a strange talent, but one that had proven to be quite useful in the past. I would imagine. On this particular day, Sydney found himself stuck on a train, traveling from te Texas to who knows where. It was a long and boring ride, and Sydney was starting to get restless. As he gazed out the window, watching the landscape pass by, he suddenly noticed a group of bandits approaching the train. They were armed and dangerous, and it was clear that they intended to rob the passengers of all their values. Oh no. Without hesitation, Sydney sprang into action. He oh, reached yes. into his bag, pulled out a swordfish ready to defend himself <laughs> and the other passengers. As the bandits boarded the train, Sydney clashed swords with their leader, using all of his base fish combat skills to hold <laughs> his own. The battle raged on, but in the end, Sydney emerged victorious. Thanks to his quick thinking and unique abilities, the train was saved and the passengers were able to continue on their journey in peace. And Sydney, well, he was hailed as a hero. Hailed by all the passengers on the train. Hey. The end. Oh, I love the ending. Uh, <laughs> okay, first. Well, clearly you love the end. <laughs> well, yeah, obviously. <laughs> what? You know what? what? I, I yeah. mixed in like this. Um, write a short story about a boy named Sydney who wielded all the weapons and combat is made of or based on fish and was stuck on a train heading from Texas. That was a really interesting way of combining it. Yeah. Okay. I'm not quite sure. I'm not quite sure where the AI pulled the idea for this, but okay. I'm excited to hear your story because you story said it's good. I'm excited. Is titled <clears throat> Sydney and the Fish. <laughs> Simple. I like yeah. it. Straight to the point. And it's actually funny. Uh, some plot points in yours were also uh, in mine, so that's just, we'll get there. <laughs> so let's begin. <laughs> okay. Let's dive into this game theory. Uh -huh. Sydney sat on the train, staring out the window at the passing landscape with a mixture of excitement and trepidation. He had always dreamed of going on a great adventure, but he could have never imagined that it would involve a train ride through the state of Texas. Where all the weapons in combat were based on fish. <laughs> okay. <laughs> As the train chugged along, Sydney couldn't help but wonder what kind of fish-based battles he might encounter. <laughs> would he have to continue? Continue. Would Would he have to sword fight with a giant swordfish? 
Or perhaps he'd have to fight on face off group of heavily armed piranhas. <laughs> <laughs> Ooh, just scary. as Sidney was getting lost in his thoughts, the train suddenly came to a screeching halt. He heard a loud commotion outside. Before he knew it, doors on the train car burst open, and a group of armed, uh, armed men stormed in. Everyone freeze! Oh. One of the men shouted, brandishing a spear made out of a giant lobster claw. <laughs> We're here to take control <laughs> of this train. <laughs> <laughs> Sidney's heart, heart raced as he watched the scene unfold. He had never been in a real-life battle before, and he had no idea what to do. But as the men started to move closer, something inside him snapped. He wasn't going to just <gasps> sit there and be taken captive without a fight. Yes! With a fierce cry, Let's go. Sidney charged at the men, brandishing a small, uh, small makeshift weapon of his own. A fork he had grabbed from the dining car. It wasn't much, but it was better than nothing. <laughs> the ensuing battle was a hilarious and chaotic mess, with Sydney and the men clashing and clanging their fish-based weapons all over the train. <laughs> In the end, Sydney emerged victorious, having fought off the attackers and saved the day. As the train pulled into the station, Sydney was hailed a hero. He had faced his fears and had emerged victorious, and he knew that he would always be ready for whatever adventures came his way. <laughs> Might I add that in mine, of... I fought off a whole group of oh. armed men, one of them with a lobster with claw spear, using only a fork and my sheer <laughs> presence of willpower. Also, I realized that these all end exactly the same. I feel like. Yeah, I know. Uh, he had faced his fears and emerged victorious. Let's see, the previous one. Uh, not the pirate one, but Emily one. She couldn't feel help but feel a sense of pride and accomplishment. She had faced her fears and done something truly meaningful. Let's see, the, uh, the Josh adventurer <laughs> one. Uh, okay, I, I believe it was also emerged victorious. Yeah, hailed as the greatest magician that the world had ever known. Uh, actually, that's... It doesn't say that there. Oh, yeah. In the end, it was Josh who emerged victorious. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah. It's got a writing style. It's a bit of a, a, bit of a reputation, that. but it's okay. It's okay. So. I love that. What do you think of my fish-based <laughs> combat story? Setting 100%. 10 out of 10. Nice. <laughs> Plot. 10 out of... Actually, no. It's, a, it's more of a 9 out of 10. But That's still it's great. Pretty good. Yes. It's pretty good. And the presentation, I love it. It's 11 <laughs> out of 10. Woo! That was amazing. Well, for yours, I would say um, presentation, a solid 8 out of 10. Very good, very good. Oh, thank yes. you, thank you, thank Plot, you. What? 10 out of 10. I like how I emerged victorious in the end, as always. <laughs> a bit biased, but I'll take it. Yeah, but you, you did the same thing for the Josh Mythic Magician story, but... <laughs> We won't talk about that. Mm -hmm. I, I was very proud of that, clearly. Yes, yes. And 10 out of 10 for historical accuracy. <laughs> Histor historical accuracy? Hold on a yeah, minute. Yeah, that's exactly what Texas is like, did you not know? <laughs> <laughs> oh, no. Anyways, thank you, listeners, for dropping by to listen to Crossing Borders. This has been Josh and Sid. Don't forget to grab your swordfish on your way out, <laughs> and we hope to see you next time. <laughs> bye bye. Bye. Swordfish. Oh, that is so rude. <laughs>